It was in about 1814 at the Chateau de Boussac, off the beaten track, in the confines of the Berry and the Limousin, that the Lady and the Unicorn would be discovered. The writer Georges Sand, a native of the Boussac region, fell for its charm and the mysterious mood it produced. These finely worked scenes are masterpieces, and if I am not mistaken, quite a curious page of history. What could be the six bases for the six ages of life? Firstly, the lady, still a child, making a crown of flowers. The springtime of youth, the still innocent lamb. Then comes the more troubled age of adolescence, with the first flutters of love. The young woman is close to a rose garden, with a mischievous unicorn frolicking in the background. Now an adult, the lady abandons her vanity and her jewels, through her will alone, her sole desire. She has reached maturity. Her own mind is now responsible for her acts, no longer the grace of God. Time has come for her to improve herself, to learn from the arts. A mirror reflecting a unicorn close to the bosom. Love reigns almighty. This is the symbol of reflection and self-knowledge. And finally, the lady seems older. Her eyes stare into the distance, one hand firmly holding the family standard and the other caressing the unicorn's horn. The lady in full awareness of her presence on earth. Whereas another proposes the five senses with an additional sixth sense, mon seul désir, my sole desire. Touch. She holds a standard and caresses the horn. Taste. She takes a treat from the bowl to feed a bird. Smell. She plates a crown of flowers. Hearing. She plays the positive organ. And sight. She holds the mirror. Five senses, but six tapestries. Latini indicated a sixth sense, which dominates all the others. All these things are inferior to the soul, he wrote. Designed and woven circa 1500, the spiritual elevation of the Lady and the Unicorn accompanied the elevation of France as a whole. The new wind blowing through the country finally took France out of the Middle Ages. <laughs>